Guy Laba is watching this move closely. He's the chief fixed income strategist at Janney Montgomery Scott and also a Bloomberg best forecaster of bank lending rates. So you know all about this, Guy. But uh, let's focus on the Treasury markets and what you think is behind this sell-off we've seen. Well, of course, the big key move was yesterday's little bit more optimistic Fed. I think we're making too big a deal about how big a leap the Fed actually made, but a little bit more optimistic yesterday. And that really sort of set off some triggers in the market, specifically as 10-year yields reach right to that four to five month high around 210 or so. That caused people to rethink this idea of a trading range. And after that, we had further resets in the overnight session. And now we've got some sort of more complicated, technically orient, technical oriented trades. For example, mortgage hedgers coming out and selling more treasuries. So you're saying that basically the, that the markets were poised for this or investors were poised for this. And this, was, this statement was kind of just an excuse to be able to do this, right? That, that's certainly what it seems like. Now, we were kind of revising our expectations for the Fed slowly over the course of the last couple of weeks or so, moving away from the expectations of a QE3 per se and more to something like what's the proposed sterilized. QE, which is a little bit less inflationary, but nonetheless also suggests less likelihood of long-term asset purchases. Mm -hmm. And that, that little thing, that little less likelihood, that was really the catalyst here. Yeah. Last week, J.J. Landau from Nomura told us that still, even though rates being as low as they are, retail investors continue to invest money in the Treasury space. Do you think we're going to start to see outflows when now that there's even more confidence in the system and people getting into riskier assets? Well, on the margin, yes. You know, really what drives Treasury rates is far more about economic conditions and it is kind of the individual investor buy sell decision on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean we have things like pension funds that have roughly a quarter of all investable assets in the US. They have to hold treasuries because that is their <coughs> long-term low-risk investment to protect their sort of clients retirement money. Hey let's connect the dots here. If the range for the past six months has been 180 to 210 on the 10-year yield and to Stephanie's point if the retail investor is stepping out What's the new range now for the tenure? Well, I think we're sort of resetting in a neighborhood of 20 to 40 basis points higher than we were previously. So whereas the prior sort of trading average was right around that 190 level, we're looking for a new range kind of centered around 225 on the 10-year note, which is right where we're trading right now. So plus or minus about 20 basis points of that until we see another big catalyst, mm -hmm. which will probably be the Fed in April. Is anything going to, uh, are these flows from the Treasury markets going to flow into the equity markets? I mean, are you seeing any of that type of trend? Well, I think I think what we're seeing, particularly among individual investors, has been a greater demand for high dividend paying equities. And a number of strategists have been talking about this concept for a couple of years, but it's really starting to come to fruition as the yields available in kind of traditional blue chip names or dividend yields are looking increasingly appealing to bonds. Hey, before we let you go, uh, today, 30 year auction, the bid to cover was 2.7, more than the 2.6 average of the past 10 auctions. What does that tell you? Well, I think it tells us that at these levels, there's plenty of demand in the Treasury markets, a lot of which comes from those pension investors that we were talking about a little bit earlier, a lot of which comes from the Federal Reserve. Keep in mind, we've got $8 billion more worth of Federal Reserve buying just in the 30-year area of the yield curve before March is out. So there's still a big source of demand, even if they're talking about stepping back a little. Okay. All right, Guy, thank you. Great to see you again.